This is a video that's going to talk about where 26ers fit into the mountain biking world, particularly long travel 26ers. If you've seen any of my other videos that I made, I did a comparison of cross country 29ers versus cross country 26ers. And I concluded that for most applications, that 29ers for cross country use are going to have the best ride characteristics for most riders. And by cross country, I mean hardtails or short travel, four inches of travel or less. So that leads to the question, well, where do 26ers fit in? And I believe that for five or six inches of travel, that 26ers still have a good place. And I'm going to discuss that. The two mountain bikes that I own right now are Niner Jet 9 RDO and a Giant Rain. And let me talk a minute about how I got to those bikes. Again, if you see my other videos, I used to own a Giant Anthem X 29er, which I really like that bike. And in my test, that actually had the fastest lap times of all the bikes that I compared. However, there was one thing about the Giant Anthem X 29er that was kind of hard for me to get, to get my head around, and that is the longer chain stays because the trails that I ride here in Florida are very, very tight. Now, if you live out west and your trails are more straight, um, the Anthem X is, would be a, a perfect bike. Uh, but for the handling characteristics that I need in a bike, I needed chain stays that were a little bit shorter. I like the, the Niner Jet 9, the older aluminum model. However, that bike was a little bit heavy and the travel was not quite what I wanted. I wanted at least four inches of travel. Well, the, giant, the, the Niner Jet 9 RDO came on the scene soon after I did the video. And so what I ended up doing is I sold my RIP 9 and I sold my Anthem X 29er to get the Jet 9 RDO. And that was a tough decision because I absolutely loved the RIP 9. But when I thought about it, um, putting a 120 millimeter travel fork, I actually went with a Talus on the, on the RDO, um, putting that fork on the bike would bring that bike very similar to a RIP 9 because I had a 120 millimeter travel fork on the RIP 9. So that's how I ended up with the, with the RDO. Now if you've seen another video that I did, I compared a Mach 5, Pivot Mach 5, to a 9er RIP 9. And in that video, I still kind of preferred the 29er. Uh, and so in the last few months, I actually came across a really good deal on a Giant Rain, which is this bike right here. And so I'm going to talk about how this bike compares to the RIP 9 and the uh, Jet 9 RDO. The most obvious comparison when talking about longer travel bikes is going to be to compare the RIP 9 to the Rain. So let me talk about that for a minute. I've ridden both of these bikes up in the mountains of North Georgia where I go often. And for the climbs, when the climb was really rough, I felt like the RIP 9 rolled up the climb smoother. There was one section that was really rocky and rooty, which I barely made up on the RIP 9, but I did make it. When I took the, the rain on that same section, I could never clear it. So in, in applications where you need momentum to get over things, particularly when going uphill, uh, I feel like the 29ers are going to be a little bit better. But the reason that I got the rain was for descending. And on the descents, the 26ers, the longer travel 26ers, like the Giant Rain, are going to be more playful. In other words, it's kind of like comparing a, a quick turning ski, if, you, if you're a skier, to a longer kind of giant slalom type ski. Whereas the giant slalom type ski is going to be more, uh, more stable and uh, it's going to be not as quick turning, whereas a slalom ski is going to be real quick turning. That's the best analogy I can give for comparing a 29er to a 26er. And this particular, bi particular bike has a dropper seat post. And I don't know if it was, it was that combined with the quicker turning 26 inch wheels and the lower uh, to the ground 26 inch wheels, but I felt faster on the descents and I felt like the 26er was more fun in the sense of being able to just kind of jump off of stuff and, and turn and go around stuff quicker. I rode the rip and the rain on two different trips and I used the video camera on one of the descents which is really the only thing I had to go by in comparing the, the how fast the bikes descended. And the rain actually descended about 40 seconds faster down this 10 minute descent than I did on the rip 9. And the reason behind that is because your center of gravity is lower, you're, you're lower to the ground, 
and this bike has a dropper seat post and when I used that I felt like I could go into the turns quicker. Also, a lot of people talk about 29ers adding a couple inches of travel more uh, in the terms of how the bike handles over the rough terrain. And it's true that 29 inch wheels will make the bike feel like it has a little bit more travel. But there is what I found a huge difference between a six inch travel bike and a four or the, uh, the rip was a four and a half inch travel bike. That difference in travel makes a big difference on how the bike handles rough stuff. Now don't get me wrong, the RIP 9 goes over rough stuff extremely well, extremely stable. Um, but that little bit more travel, uh, inch and a half of travel makes a big difference. And so when I was going over the rough stuff, I felt like the bike was able to absorb that stuff a little bit more on the rain. Um, not necessarily because of the wheel size, but because of the, uh, the extra travel. So that leads to probably one of the biggest conclusions about where longer travel 26ers fit in. And that is that you can add quite a bit more travel without adding a lot of weight and without having the bike sit up too high. Now as far as weight, this is the Rain Zero and this weighs 28.9 pounds with the XT pedals. My RIP 9 weighed 29.5 pounds with XT pedals. And so not a big difference as far as weight. However, there is quite a bit difference in travel. When I got my Jet 9 RDO, I actually intended that to be my one bike, which is why I went with the Talus Fork. And the Talus Fork was only just a smidgen heavier than the 100 millimeter travel fork. So it really made sense to go with the Talus. But if I were going to add a second uh, longer travel 29er, it wouldn't make sense to have another one with a 120 millimeter travel fork. I need more travel to justify being able to have um, a second 29er. And if I were going to do that and add a, a 140 millimeter travel fork uh, and make the bike quite a bit more beefy than the, the Jet 9 RDO, that's going to push the bike somewhere around you know 31, 32 pounds. So with the rain, I'm able to have that bike that's got more travel, uh, the bike has a dropper seat post, um, the bike has pretty beefy tires on it, um, a wider bar, and so I'm able to add those things without adding a lot of weight. The other consideration that I have to make is the fact that I'm only 5'8", so having a 29er with a 140 millimeter travel fork is going to put my center of gravity up pretty high, um, whereas with a six inch travel 26er, I'm able to keep my center of gravity low and not feel like I'm riding just this huge bike. Another advantage that I see right now with longer travel 26ers is that you can buy a complete bike uh, and still take advantage of the buying power that comes from the big brands like you know, Giant Specialized Trek where they have a lot of buying power with their components. Um, right now, there's not a lot of long travel 29ers that are decent. Um, that you can still kind of get that that big brand buying power uh, with the uh, with the components. Now I mentioned before that the RDO was going to be my one bike, um, and I came across this really good deal on the rain, and so I couldn't really go out and build a bike from the ground up again, getting the frame and all the components. Uh, it, for the, the second mountain bike, I really needed to take advantage of a bike that was that was complete. Uh, and I wasn't going to have to spend a ton of money on it um, like I did with the, uh, with the RDO. Here's about a three minute video that I shot at a trail near my house where I rode the rain and I rode the uh, RDO and I put the video side by side so you can maybe just get an idea of how the bikes um, steer. I used the GoPro camera on the chest mount so you can see the handlebars. It doesn't tell you a whole lot but it, you know at least it's got some ride uh, video in this one and uh, also kind of talk through the, the ride characteristics of the bikes. So here we have the Jet 9 RDO on the left and the, and the Giant Rain on the right. And since I did this test in Florida, I'm obviously not going to find any long climbs or descents, but this section of trail has a lot of good variety. It's got some drops and climbs and it's fairly rooty in sections. And with the 29er, you feel like it kind of floats on top of the train a little bit better, whereas you can feel the suspension working more on the 26er. I didn't do this test for speed, but the smoother the trail is, the faster the 29er feels. And whereas when it gets really rough, uh, you feel like the 26er is actually more stable 
and absorbs the terrain better. Here's a short climb coming up as I take a right here and it's fairly rooty. Both bikes did pretty well here. Both bikes climb really well. You can feel the, uh, the suspension absorbing the roots but I could really feel the weight of the rain here. I felt like I was working harder to get up this section. And coming down this section here is probably the roughest section of the trail. It's got some pretty good sized roots. You really can't see it in the video but they're pretty chunky roots and that's a section where the rain you just felt the tire stay glued to the trail and it the rain really felt a lot more plush there than the uh, the RDO. There's a sh little steep short drop there and here's a uh, kind of a, a rough climb over some roots, roots and rocks. And coming up here in a second is actually a dual slalom track that we have on the trails. And both bikes did pretty well here on this track. I actually felt like the 29er was more stable. I'm not one that really tries to pop the jumps and get a lot of air. And so the 29er you feel like as you just kind of take the, the air that comes with your speed, it felt a little bit more stable and the landings felt more plush on the rain. Now obviously if you're one that likes to jump a lot and uh, you know do tricks in the air, the 26ers are going to be more maneuverable in the air, but if you're one that just kind of rolls over jumps, the uh, 29ers I think feel a little bit more stable. This section goes pretty fast into the woods and the 26er with these short turns that kind of left and right it feels more agile and it feels less committed in the turns in the sense that you can throw it in and out of the turns easier whereas the 29er you're more committed in the turns but it does feel like you have more traction and it feels a little bit more stable let me just take about 20 seconds to show the bikes that I own uh, this is the the rain zero and I did a complete review on this and you can see that video but just real quick, this is the, the rain. It's got full XT components. Uh, there's the dropper seat post. And it's got a Talus 150 fork on it. And this is the Jet 9 RDO. It's built with SRAM components, SRAM XO. It's got stands, wheels. And like I mentioned before, it's got the Talus fork. So let me wrap this up by just a few more discussion points on this topic. First, one nice thing about having a 26 or a 29er is the fact that they ride so completely different. And I don't have a ton of trails to ride around my house, so I end up riding some of the tra same trails um, twice or three times during a week. So it's nice to switch it up and have a bike that's going to be, you know, riding uh, quite a bit different than the other bike. One thing that I didn't mention earlier is that when I was riding in the mountains, what I noticed is that on switchbacks on uphill switchbacks I felt like the 29er did better because the the momentum that you're carrying uh, to get around those switchbacks was better on the 29er however on the downhill switchbacks where you already have speed and you don't really need that momentum to get around the switchback you can just kind of whip the bike around and I felt like the 26er did better on the downhill switchback so my final conclusion on this is that for cross-country applications hardtails and short travel, four inches of travel or less, I think that the 29er is going to be the way to go for most riders and most trails and most riding styles. Now the five and six inch travel range where you're talking all mountain, aggressive trail riding, that's where the area is still a little bit gray and it's really going to depend again on your riding style, on your height, uh, and the trails that you ride. Uh, for me, I'm really liking the long travel 26er. Does that mean I won't get an, uh, another long travel 29er? No, but if I did, I'd have to get one with quite a bit more travel than the Jet 9 RDO to justify the purchase. So I'd have to have a 140 millimeter travel fork. Um, and so I'd really have to test ride the bike to see how it compares to the rain. I could love it, or I could feel like it's just you know too tall and too big. There are some really good long travel 29ers coming in the market. So it's gonna be interesting to see uh, what plays out in the future. So thanks for watching the video. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. Ride safe.